You're listening to Slightly Warped, the podcast that tackles topics from every angle. Here's Richard Kearney and Ryan Foley. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Slightly Warped, the podcast where we can talk about some crazy things, some serious things. Either way, we have some serious and crazy reactions. I'm Rick, joined as usual by Big Show. Show, how you doing, man? I'm pretty good, sir. Pretty good. Can't complain. How was the uh, grandson's football game? Uh, kind of like the Raiders. Didn't play very well. but That, that bad, huh? Yeah, we, it was pretty we bad. will. We Actually, will they had the lead later. at halftime. They had the lead at halftime, and then oh. I think the final score was like thirty-five to six. So it was pretty bad. So they forgot played, they they play played like the Raiders against the Cardinals. Yeah, okay. they forgot they had to play the second half. I, I, but you know, the kids have fun. That's all that matters. That's true. That's true. So we are at episode one hundred. And 18. Woo. I can't believe I've done 118 of these shows. Man, it seems we've awesome. only done like 10 or 12 of these. Man, time flies. <laughs> uh, yeah, if y'all don't get that, that means that y'all haven't been watching enough of this show. You need to like, share, and definitely hit that subscribe button. Okay, so check it out. The name of this episode is It Sucks to Be a Woman. Now, before y'all pull the plug, females, and turn it off, let me be clear. We love our women out there. We love our vivacious, shapely women. We love all women. So when we talk about a couple of these subjects, we not only speak about what we are reading or hearing, but we're also giving our input. Please, please, please make sure that you separate one from the other. Because we might be slightly warped, but we ain't stupid at all. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, show this first one I want to get into. Burger King employee slams customer who complained uniform was a distraction. She's mad at the wrong person. So, I looked at the article, and um, I believe her name was Layla, either Layla or Lola. I want to say it was Layla. Um, she posted a TikTok. I, I'm not big into TikTok. I don't really know much about, you know, that. Come on, folks, look at my beard, you whippersnappers. Uh, anyway, I guess while she was working, and let me preface this, she is a Burger King employee, so she Did had you on say her while burger- she was working or while she was twerking? Working. Working. Okay, just want to, <laughs> want to make sure. <laughs> No, no, definitely while she was working. Um, I guess a couple came in, and according to her, the woman said that what she was wearing was causing a problem. Um, She accused, uh, this takes place back in April, the employee of distracting her husband while she was trying to ask her husband a question. And Layla said that um, the lady complained because she said, and this is what the lady said, your work uniform is a distraction to my husband. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with Burger King employees, black pants, black jeans, and then a charcoal gray or black t-shirt that has the Burger King stripes on it. Not a distraction at all. I guess what the woman meant to say was the body that was filling it was a distraction. Now, I don't know about you, show. Uh, uh, We like a woman with curves. It's not a distraction, though. Um, How would you put it? Because I would say it it wouldn't be a distraction, you know, just because you like something you see. Uh, that that's the husband's fault for not, 
you know, paying attention to the wife, not the uh, employee's fault. I mean, she got a little backside on her from this picture, but it's nothing little, that's gonna make me just little you know, backside. <laughs> talk to me. Poor the girl has some cakes on her. Uh the it you know speaking from a <clears throat> rounder gentleman of the two that has frequented said fast food joints such as Burger King from time to time. Normally, you know. She's prop the the wife was probably just slightly upset that the that the girl was more shapely than she was, I would assume. And her anger is uh misplaced. She really mm -hmm. shouldn't be angry at all. She should, you know, me and my wife can be out and we both see a beautiful woman. We're both gonna say, Good Gandhi, look at her. You know, that's just you know, we we respect that, but you know. Evidently, in their relationship, um, he doesn't respect his wife or girlfriend, whoever she was, enough mm -hmm. to let the other woman become a distraction to their conversation. Exactly. Um, I don't care who walks into a room. If I'm in the, having a conversation with my wife, no matter who it is, you know, I'm not going to disrespect my wife by lusting or overlooking at someone else that, that might believe more shapely than my wife. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just look at it like this. Um, no, she's not a distraction at all. Like you said, the emphasis and the onus is on him. Oh he, yeah. He needs to uh, be able to, he needs to be able to handle his business. You know, we see, and I we see nice looking women everywhere. We also need to know the, his side of the story, too. Like, really, what was his reaction? Because let's face it, we've all been with some women in our lives that were a little bit more... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Weren't... As had had a high enough self-esteem for themselves that they're automatically they're quick to get upset about certain things you know what i mean yes. and when we were younger we had you know so they would quick to pop off <clears throat> maybe this was the same case maybe she just doesn't feel good about herself and i mean he may have just looked and was like mm, and kept it pushing you never know I, and she just automatically got mad because he looked away or whatever so he may have been daydreaming may not yeah. even been paying attention to her Although, you know, I'm, after I'm sure at he TikTok, was paying attention to her. Yeah. 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 I'm sure um, he noticed the the attire, which really, like you said, wasn't. I mean, I'm not going to the strip club looking for something to look like her. I'm just saying. Yeah. Now, she obviously not is mad at the wrong person. She, she should have been mad at her husband. I get that. I, I really do. Because it is kind of disrespectful to be uh, oogling another female if that's what he was doing but you really can't go to that female and say why are you wearing this this is a distraction that ain't none of nobody else's business but the person that's wearing it right and especially agree. now it's you you go back to the strip club analogy it's not like she came in you know in a string bikini or a thong um she came in in her uniform bro what, what else can she do which is why I wanted to clarify if you said working or twerking. Because if this <laughs> young lady was twerking, I could see it could be a distraction. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And if this if she was twerking, she should no longer be employed by Burger King at this time. <laughs> hey, she could have been on a break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I wonder how the Burger King mascot would feel about that. <laughs> You know, as as a not so young anymore director, I could put together a nice little commercial. I don't think it would be seen on very many TV stations, but right, that's a whole different subject for a whole different. Thing. But will you get a customer base? That's all that matters when you do a commercial. Hey, after the club, you get a little hunger. Come down to Burger King. That's right. Have that big old head headed king hand you a whopper. <laughs> At 3 a.m. <laughs>
And just like our title of the show suggests, we are both just proved we are slightly warped. Sometimes more than slightly. <laughs> now, in closing this out, though, I want to add something here. Um, uh, we already said it's not her father or anything. Is there anything that she should mm. do, could do? or even attempt to do if it was said a distraction. And again, I don't Who, believe the young is. lady, yes. the young lady worker. No. Yeah. Okay. No. So we on the not same page on that too. Yeah. Not at all. Okay. Um, wow. I, I, again, I put this all on the guy and he got some explaining to do. I don't know what happened after they got home, but <clears throat> he, he probably had to shell out some money and, hmm. you know, make up, Make up for right. his transgressions. Probably and, switch going from Burger King to Wendy's. And and I'll, I'll actually say this too. Um, touching on what you said a few minutes ago, we're men. We do notice these things. You know, that's not a distraction. That's real talk. That's real life. We notice these things. And because of that, because we see these things, um, that just shows that we have a heartbeat. It there's no ill will or ill intent at all. Obviously, he shouldn't have kept looking. You know, sometimes you can give it the slidey eye and keep it moving. And you know, sometimes you just catch yourself. Oh, I'm looking too long. Let me turn my neck the other way. Uh, one, the other. It don't matter. Um, at the end of the day, he was in the wrong. He's the one that should suffer, not this young lady. Agree. All right. Now, keeping with the keep on, I want to talk to you about another subject that um, we've ran into when it comes to uh, these women and, and bodies. And now I'm late to the party. I just watched Jurassic World Domination last week. Didn't see it in theaters. I waited to get it when it came out on DVD and Blu-ray. Good movie. Not I bad. didn't. I didn't think anything of this until I read this article and did a quick re a rewatch of the movie. Um, the woman who plays Claire, um, Bryce Dallas Howard, daughter of Ron, um stated that this film required a lot of action and stunt work and well i'm sorry she stated that um uh, in the ordeal despite her claims that the uh, that uh, for our english speaking audience <laughs> anyway yeah rewind read that uh, yeah. okay. all right this will go on the blooper reel, by the way. Um, <laughs> Bryce Dallas Howard has gone through some horrific things while making a name for herself in the acting world. And the article says that there was a horrible condition that she was told to lose weight for Jurassic World domination. And um, according to Howard on the third movie, it was actually because there was so many women in the cast it was something that director Colin Trevorrow felt very strongly about in terms of protecting her because the conversation came up again. We need you to lose weight. Now, watching the movie, I did not notice that she was even on the heavy side. Now, when I looked at it the second time after reading the article, I did notice that she was wearing a lot of loose shirts, open shirts or baggy shirts. But she didn't look like she needed to lose anything. Uh, she fit in with the other two women just fine. Now, I don't know if that's because she did do any dieting or they just, you know, how Hollywood is. They can hide stuff with this, that, and the other. Uh, it, it was told to her because the executive producers were the ones that wanted her to lose weight. Now, y'all know how I feel about these big budget movies and the fat suits in Hollywood that think they know everything. Again, yes, I noticed her attire was different than all the others when I watched it the second time. 
but didn't notice anything the first time show. And if this article had not come out, I would not have even gave it a second thought. So my two questions to you were, did you notice anything about her when you watched this movie? And do you believe that Hollywood has a huge double standard still when it comes to women? Uh, first question, easy answer, no. Didn't notice it that she. I still just think I've only watched it one time, and I mean, not once. I say, dang, she's a little big to be running from them Tyrannosaurus Rexes or anything like that. You know, <laughs> not once. Um, but that could explain why the dinosaurs were running so fast. She looked a little tasty. She was she was just right meal for him. You never know. Um, as for the double standard, I mean, of course, there's still a double standard. Um, but playing devil's advocate, mm -hmm. that particular movie and that particular genre does require a lot of physical exertion. Yeah. That would be like me. Um, you know, I'm a very handsome gentleman. I, you're not tooting my own horn, but... Uh, if I went out for the role Thor, I'm pretty sure they're going to tell me I need to lose some weight. Now, let me back that up. Is that in game Thor or current? Doesn't matter. Thor? In, in Thor. In, I don't know. know. In game Thor was a big guy. I, not as big as I am. <laughs> he just had a big <laughs> belly. I'm just saying. Uh, you know, so, you know, it depends on the role, you know, type of thing. Um, but I think because she was established in the series itself, it really shouldn't have mattered. And I'm pretty sure they did it for, um, you know, I was saying devil's advocate for, you know, to make sure she can still do the stunts and running. And things like that. But I know that's, that's di let's just be real. That's not why they told her she needed to lose weight. Right. I right. mean, they wanted to look, wanted her and all the other women to look a certain way. And as long as men are controlling the world, unfortunately, women are going to be objectified, right, wrong, or indifferent. It's just what's going to happen. It, like you said at the beginning, it sometimes it sucks being a woman. I mean, I'm I praise the Lord that I was born a man because I couldn't understand. I feel sorry for my daughters with the world they had to deal with, you know. And it just gets worse and worse and worse. Yeah. Um. It, it, it like is I read, this is completely off the subject, but mm -hmm. kind of, I read uh, an article that this interviewer asked women, what would you do if for one day all the men had disappeared? And answers were, I would walk at night without being fear of being attacked. You know, mm. I would go out of my house wearing whatever I want to wear without dealing with any, you know. Those things that we as men don't think about is an everyday thought to a female. Yeah, I mean, and, and we're just scratching the surface on that. Uh, oh, all the yeah. females that are uh, watching, leave us a comment if you watch on YouTube. Tell us some other examples of how it sucks to be a woman in the quote unquote man's world. And you know, take it at another level. What can we as men do to make it not suck? You know, obviously, you know, it goes without saying there's some good dudes in the world, but for every good dude, there's an a-hole. So, you know, or two. we as men got to clean out. Yeah, definitely two or three. So we got to clean that up. That's the responsibility that is on us. And I will also say this mm -hmm. because... We also, um, you know, no different than, you know, the the racism part of our country. People of my complexion need to fight hard, harder for the people of your complexion yeah. to help rectify that situation. So when it comes to the females issues, we as men have to fight just as hard as they are for equal for equal standards. That's right. And, you know, closing this subject out, being a black woman, that's, you know, double. Double minority. Yeah. 
So we understand it. We sympathize as best as possible, but we know that we will never be in your shoes and we could never fully grasp. We could talk about it all day, but we could never fully grasp what it's like to be a woman. Um, so I'll say this in closing hats off to y'all women. Cause we know, we know that it's hard, but y'all are the ones that deal with it. Y'all are the ones that have the strength. And yeah, I said it earlier, it's quote unquote, a man's world. But in the words of James Brown, it wouldn't be nothing without a woman. That's right. And now it's time for a grown man to cry. We're going to talk about the National Football League. I take solace in the fact that Kansas City lost too. <laughs> First off, before we go any further... I was pretty proud of this because I caught a lot of heat from some people that I know about this pick I made last week. <clears throat> I'm not, I don't, not going to toot my own horn, mm -hmm. but, <clears throat> but, <how> it, <clears throat> but I did pick Jacksonville to beat Chargers. Yes, you did. We've got the tape to prove it. And uh, man, did they destroy him. Yeah, um, that was ugly. That was ugly. Um, that kind of makes the Chiefs win not very good. <laughs> if you break opinion. down the AFC West, which, by the way, everybody garbage. and their mamas said the AFC West was going to be the toughest division in the NFL. That is not the case, is it? It is not. Um, they, are, they are hot garbage. The Chargers picked up exactly where they left off. They play tough here and there but they make some very Charger-like decisions in games, and it comes back to bite them. I guess they thought Jacksonville was going to be a cakewalk. They got walked on already. But... Uh, now, to their oh credit, they lost a lot of defensive players during yeah. that game. Yeah. And they kept dropping like flies. They lost their left tackle, I think, for the year. Um, But still. Yeah, I mean... And, and then Herbert shouldn't have been playing. Yeah, um, he's going to be gutsy. He's earning that pay. I'll give him that. I have no problem with that. Um, but, yeah, it was doomed from the beginning. When I saw it, it was, what, 31 to 3 or 31 to whatever, um, I just shook my head. I thought about you because I'm like, you know, I could have talked to 100 people during the show, and we all would have said, you crazy, man. Mm -hmm. But no, he's not crazy, folks. He's just slightly yeah. warped. <laughs> Jacksonville is going to make some noise. I told you this at the very beginning when we first started talking that they're they 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 could be that dark horse that could make some noise. Them or Miami, yeah, I I agree. Um, well, Miami's not so much as a dark horse because Tyree Kill's been blasting at the mouth since he got traded. You know, mm -hmm. so he's keeping them in the limelight. You don't hear squat about Jacksonville. That's true. That's true. You know, so Jacksonville has been the butt of a joke for several years now. Oh, so heck yeah. They just crept up on everybody, and they're like, all right, see if we a joke now. Right. But going we'll back see how to they, that, play, they play Philly this week, so we'll see how they go. Yeah. Now, that's that one intrigued me. It's keeping with the AFC West, though, Denver, the one team – that scored the least amount of points is the Boy. only team in the AFC West that won. What the hell, man? Against the 49ers, which is not a bad team. No, not at all. Which scares and you, me. And you try to say that, you know, this was a defensive game. It just really, I mean, it really wasn't. I mean. It was a game of errors where nobody yeah. could seem to get anything and done. coaching errors. Yeah. Which but, has hey, been Denver's M.O. all season long. So that yes. game was ripe for the taking for the Niners. I actually fell asleep when the game was 10-5, to 5, only to wake I, up to find out that Denver had won that game. I turned it off at halftime. I was like, I'm done. I was already pissed off the Chiefs lost. So it's, like, it's a wrap. I'm done. Yeah. Are you still keeping with the fact that you think Denver will only win four or five games? Oh, Yeah. Well, they got two down. They only need to win two more. They've only won one game, right? 
Uh, no, they won. Um, so last they tied week with too. the Chiefs for first place. Let me see here, because in week one they got blasted because they uh went for it. I mean, they didn't go for it against Seattle. Uh, who did Denver play the week before? Now, now I got to think about it. Cause oh, well, I just look at standings real quick. Okay. Uh, because I thought they won last week. They probably did. Because I that's that's where I was concerned. I'm like, you mean my team hasn't won yet, and they have. Um. Yeah, they're two and one. Yeah. Okay. So they playing like hot garbage, but they in first place or a share of first place. And it's it's only a share because the Chiefs did the unthinkable. Hey, let's play down to our opponent. Something very unchiefs like. Um they played Houston in week two. Houston, that's it. They they barely won that game. Yeah, 16 to 9. Well, and you know, since we're moving on to the Chiefs, um I wouldn't say they they didn't play down. You know, like I want to wrap my head like were they looking ahead to Tampa Bay, maybe? And then I talked to my buddy and was like, no, they weren't, you know. Um, I got to give the Colts some credit because their backs were against the wall. It was their home opener. They tied the first week. They got Molly Wapped the second week. They thought they were going to get Molly Wapped in the third week because the juggernaut, the Kansas City Chiefs, were coming in. I think it was just – it was just – and historically – the Chiefs and the Colts, for some reason, the Colts give Kansas City a problem. I mean, you go back history. I think Mahomes has only beaten them one time. No, he's beaten them twice. Once in the playoffs, once in well, no, I think maybe he's only beaten them in the playoffs. Yeah, because the time before that, Andrew Luck had uh was down twenty something points and the Colts came back to win it. That yeah, was a regular that was game. that was that was Alex Smith, and that was that was also that was Alex Smith. Okay, that was okay. the play. That was a wild card playoff game. I, uh, I want to say because Alex or um, Andrew Luck's last game was against Kansas City, and that was in 2018. And we that's beat right. Them and then the, he retired. We beat them in the playoffs, right? Because uh, we went next week, lost to the Patriots in the championship game, but. You know, historically, like I said, the Colts, they just give us some fits for for whatever reason. I, the special teams, this is the worst I've ever seen our special teams play under under Dave Tobe. Um, that's what hurts you to me. That's boy. what hurts you. Hey, I mean, what's the dude's name? Sky? Sky Moore. Yeah. Um, no, he's Sky Less now. <laughs> because, I, ha, first of all, even with the roof open, the sun was not that bright in Indianapolis. How do you lose track of the ball? Just dr- it went through his hands. Have you ever been in that stadium? I have not. It, from what I understand, it's from a player's perspective. They were talking about it. It's really when that don't when the when the roof is open, it's really hard to track the ball through the rafters and all that other stuff. Oh, the stuff they got hanging out. From, Dark light, dark light, dark light, dark light, and then you see the brown ball coming through. So sometimes it's difficult. Oh, and right. he's a rookie. So I kind of gave the first one a pass. Mm-hmm. The second one, I was like, get his ass out of there. Put somebody else back yes. there. Yeah. And then, you know, our backup is Pacheco or Pacheco, our running back. Mm-hmm. And then he ends up muffing one on a kickoff return. Didn't you also have a couple of missed field goals? Missed field goal and a missed extra point, I'm pretty sure. That's that's what it was, yeah. And then um because we weren't we didn't have no faith in the kicker, we go for it instead of just trying for the field goal and still miss. I, it was a blunder of all blunders. Everything that went wrong could have went wrong. Now I will say that phantom whatever was said from Chris Jones to Matt Ryan that caused the 15 yards to give the Colts an extra chance and they end up going out and score. I don't know what was said. It's football. Words are words. 
I'm sure that people talk about your mama and anything else all throughout the game. There was no I, I physicality think, done. You know, what I, I think mean? the refs gave Indianapolis that because of the blunder earlier when uh, Kansas City went for two and got it. Uh, you have to admit, um, your tight end clearly didn't get in. No, he didn't. He didn't get in. And but, I love Kelsey. I'm a Raiders fan, and I love Kelsey. But right, bro Kelsey was down. Kelsey should have caught that ball. True. I mean, it was really close. It was super close. Yes, it was very close. So, because I think they're talking <clears throat> about his calf, the side of his calf, get you know, hitting first. It was it was the reason why they got it was it was inconclusive. You know, they mm -hmm. didn't have no definitive proof. True. You know, and if you look at it in real time, it looks like he got in. Uh, and of course, how how it stands that was, is based on what it's called at first. If they had yeah, called I, it unsuccessful, they still couldn't overturn it. I don't think that they were trying to make a call right because it wasn't a blatant miss on the two point conversion. You know what I mean? Yeah, it wasn't like the 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 pass interference between the Saints and the Vikings a few years ago in the playoffs, yeah, or Rams, or whoever that was. You know, it wasn't blatant like that. But we just stopped the Colts. They were going to have to punt. And the referee basically says, nope, do over. Here's another fresh set of downs. I, like I said, I don't know what was said. But to me, it's just words. I mean, he's not – it doesn't matter what he said. Yeah, worse things happen in the pile when they're going right. to the I mean, if he were to push him or punch him or whatever, okay, I get it. But, I mean – could have, I don't know what he said, but I don't think he was worth that penalty. However, the players do know the rules, and Jones should know to just keep his damn mouth shut and walk back to the sideline. Yeah. And then there's my team. And I believe <laughs> I'm on record for saying if they lose this and go to 0-3, it's time to hit the panic button. I'm hitting the panic button. I'm slamming the panic button. Because if we lose to Denver at home, this is going to be a home game. We are truly in trouble and the season is over. Before I start crying, let's go over these picks for the AFC West. We got a couple minutes left. <clears throat> While we're talking about Denver and Las Vegas, for what could be the final time this year, I'm going with Vegas. <laughs> we need this. We can't go 0-4 oh, into Kansas City the week after. We cannot. Because our season would definitely be over. So I'm going with Vegas. I'm stepping out on faith that Josh McDaniels will finally get this thing right. Who you got? Who 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 are they playing? Broncos. Oh. This is two coaches that are inept. So it's who, which coach is going to be make the worst coaching decision in this game? That's what it's going to boil down to. I really like Denver's defense. I know. It scares me. They made San Francisco look inept. But it's in Vegas. Man. I'm going to go ahead and pick Vegas. Okay. Um, and it's going to be an ugly game, like nine to eight. All right. We got less than a minute left. Chiefs, Buccaneers. I'm going with the Chiefs. They're going to turn this thing around. They, there's no way they lose two in a row. They just don't. I have this as one of the Chiefs losses on my overall schedule, so I got to stick with it. Okay. Chargers against the Houston Texans. I got to believe the Chargers can, you know, make up for what they did in Jacksonville. I'm picking the Texans. Ooh, this is going to be an interesting week, folks. Real quick before we go, like, share, subscribe. Love this show because we're going to be back with more. Um, I'm not even going to talk about Carr versus uh, Lamar because Lamar balled out. Carr barely got by. So we'll get back to that one next week. So, guys, I want to remind you, like, share, subscribe. 
We really appreciate you. And for Ryan, Big Show Pulley, I'm Richard Kearney. We will see you guys again next week. Stay positive. Stay blessed. Mm -hmm.